Everything's tuned up nicely. Hello CQ, calling CQ 40 meters. Hello 40 meters AM. Calling CQ40, this is WA3VJB, WA3Victor Juliet Bravo, WA3VJB AM, calling CQ and tuning 7276 for an AM call. WA3VJB, uh, WA3VJB, uh, this is uh, AJ400, AJ400, do you copy for? I heard an AJ4 and I heard K1GMM, who I heard yesterday or the day before. Let me pick up the K1 first, since you had the better signal, and introduce myself here. I don't think we've actually worked, although I did hear you on. K1GMM from WA3VJB. The name is Paul at Annapolis. How copy? Hey, good morning. Uh, still morning? Uh, yes, barely. Hey, good morning, Paul. Yeah, good to hear you. A uh, great signal coming into Vermont. I'm, I sit between Manchester and Rutland, uh, west side of the state here. And, uh, ooh, well, if you can hear me okay, I'll leave it where it is. It uh, looks like I'm kind of tickling at about, uh, what is it, about 25-watt carrier. I, I can turn it up if you're struggling, so let me know. I uh, didn't set the drive. So good morning. Hope all is well, and thanks for picking me up there, Paul. Uh, name is Steve up here, Southwest Vermont. Kilo One Golf, Mike, Mike. Okay, Steve. Well, it might be uh, nice to just crank it up just to make sure the frequency seems occupied. Uh, a lot of uh, activity here at the top of 40 meters today, and although I'm hearing you Q5, it's only about S7 to S9, and it might do well to, uh, to perk it up beyond 25 watts for sure, especially for the band tends to fade or anything. All right, well, let me uh, hang on with you here just for a moment. Good signal there between uh, Manchester and Rutland, Vermont, that I wrote down. And I'll try to pick up the AJ4, Alpha Juliet 4, question mark, from WA3VJB. Go ahead. Uh, WA3VJB uh, on the group is uh, Alpha Juliet 4, Oscar, Oscar. Alpha Juliet 4, Oscar, Oscar. Good morning to you, uh, Paul, and good morning to Steve in Vermont. Uh, a couple of those of you very well over here into uh, South Windsor, Connecticut. I think we have talked in the past, uh, Paul. Uh, I believe we have uh, QSO in the past. So let me put it back to you, WA3VJB, uh, AJ400. Okay, Pedro, yeah, I think we have now that the uh, I've sorted out your call letters and the fact that you're in Connecticut. AJ400 with K1GMM in Vermont from WA3VJB Annapolis. Good morning uh, to you both. Uh, five, another five minutes and then it'll be afternoon. Hearing both of you just fine, Q5, both cases. It's funny, I was just on here with uh, a guy uh, who's been licensed, I guess, for about 30 years, N2 LJO. And we were talking about how you used to have to change your call letters when you changed the geographic district that you were in. And I remembered that one of the reasons they discontinued that at the FCC was that they discontinued the station license. There used to be a two-part license. One was the operator license, which was your grant of privileges. And the other was a station license, which was tied to the geographic location and the issuance of the call letters assigned to that particular area. So I guess when they drop that along with secondary licenses and a number of other changes that I'm, I'm now thinking back on, you no longer had to. And I wonder what I would have become when I was down in Virginia with my novice license as WN4DKG. Would I have become a WB4 or, uh, or just what? I don't know. Because a friend of mine uh, was WB4UWH and he was licensed well before me. And then uh, here I was, a DKG. I, I wonder if they were going back and pulling out some of the call letters that had expired or were no longer used in the uh, antiquated system that the FCC was probably using for a database in those days. So nonetheless, here we are, and I became WN3 and then WA3VJB, and we'll probably keep it uh, hereafter. That's the story on that. K1GMM and the group WA3VJB. Yeah, I've got a um, uh, Pedro. Good morning, Pedro. My old stomping grounds in Connecticut. Uh, really quick, I was uh, moved here in 87, 
from northwestern Connecticut, just west of where you're at. And uh, over in the Barkhampstead area, I uh, grew up in Pleasant Valley. Still had the old homestead there on West River Road on the Farmington River. Headwaters, of course, uh, below the dam in the trophy trout section right across the street from the old homestead. Uh, so, yeah, uh, good to hear you from Connecticut. Great signal coming in from Connecticut. And let me let me crank things up here. Okay, that's, uh, that's pushing. That's about a 75-watt carrier. So hopefully that's a little bit better there, Paul. Uh, I can go higher than that um, if I need to. Uh, anyways, I want it to be comfortable. So yeah, I was listening to you guys earlier, Paul, uh, talking about the Carl Science. I got kind of a funny story for you. You'll laugh when you hear this. Typical uh, junior moment, uh, you know, uh, newbie, newbie moment. When I grabbed my call sign, I was looking for the easiest, fastest, shortest uh, syllable, one by three. And so I got it. And I, I, so fast forward, you know, I'm talking to this one guy. And this was, this was back in like 2016. I had just gotten a call. He said, well, that's an inter interesting call. Uh, he said, I'm curious as to why you did that. Why you wanted that. And I told him, he said, hmm. Well, phonetically, it's not very strong. And we had a good chat about it. And it completely changed the way I look at uh, obtaining a vanity call sign. Um, and I agree with him. He said, uh, if you work a lot of DX, and which I do, uh, it's kind of my wheelhouse. I enjoy that. And I just started playing with AM the past week. So this is probably my fourth time, fifth time on AM. <laughs> and I really like it. It's a nice group, and uh, I'm going to learn a lot in here. So, uh, um, you know, I got thinking about that phonetic, uh, the strength of the phonetics. And I think he's right on the money with that. Uh, you want something that's got some bite to it, that's easy to pull out of a pile-up or in weak signals or anything, and this call is not that. Uh, people tend to miss the last mic. Um, I have to use Mexico a lot. I have to use Germany on the Gulf because they can't quite grab it, you know, if, if there's a big pile-up. It causes a lot of confusion. Um, so uh, I figured I'd just throw that at you. Uh, Paul, I'll put it back to you for a quick comment, <laughs> and you won't hurt my feelings, trust me. K1GMM. Yeah, that's interesting. Of course, you wouldn't know that just coming into it. I, I think if you were more uh, experienced in the ways of phonetic italicizing and understanding things, uh, you probably would have thought it through differently. But I like GMM as a, as a voice uh, a routine conversation call letter. The one by three sounds good. It does come out monosyllabically like that. Not a lot of uh, you know staccato involved there. Um, General Motors might. I mean, it even lends itself to uh, some creative phonetics uh so yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't be too inhibited about it especially if you're going to hang out with us here on am uh where things are a little more relaxed than in the world of dog x-ray or contesting uh, k1 gmm and the group w a3 vjb back in college somebody tagged me with burton's jealous boyfriend which i've always liked uh but the valuable junk box seems to be the one everybody remembers and, uh, you know, otherwise, you know, I've never chased dog x-ray with any significant enthusiasm nor uh, contesting. So uh, I kind of took what I got randomly, and I'll, I'll stick with it. Uh, Steve, go ahead. Well, oh, that's funny, dude. <laughs> I started, I was smiling the whole time uh, right after you said that. People are so creative. Uh, right when I got the call, the guys that know me up here, um, I, I, I love antennas. You know, who doesn't, right? So I was, uh, I did a lot of playing with antennas, figuring out what would work here, blah, blah, blah. Uh, spent three years, every day, literally every day, in blinding snowstorms at 11.30 at night. Uh, wife out there trying to hold the tarp, uh, trying to help me unsnag an antenna that got caught in the apple tree. I got stories, dude, you'd, you'd freaking laugh. Idiot. Uh, completely off the rails, right? So, knowing how I behave, the guys that know me, uh, one of the guys said, oh, Green Mountain Maniac. I said, what the heck? And, and, and they're like, he's like, his name's Todd. I can't remember his call sign now. I haven't spoken to him in a few years. Um, 
who lives over in Ludlow, Vermont. And he said to me, he said, yeah, you, you run around like a chicken with your head cut off, uh, like your ass is on fire all the time. Uh, he said, you're, you're like the Green Mountain Maniac, everything you do. And I, I started laughing. You know, people, I didn't get the call for, I, did, I never even thought of that, Paul, uh, what to use as a phonetic, uh, aside from Golf Mike Mike. Never crossed my mind. It's just how I think. But, oh, yeah, uh, Green Mountain Maniac, uh, Mickey Mouse, and uh, there's some other ones that are not particularly pleasant. Uh, I think they're funny, but I don't use them. <laughs> you leave it to everybody else with a creative mind and the sense of humor. I have none. Uh, let's see. Uh, a WA GMM. I like it. I do like Green Mountain Maniac. I, I was grinning in the same way you were. And I, I'm thinking, you know, my mind starts reeling. It's like, okay, let's come up with a good one for him. Girls Macho Man. Yeah, that, that's one that comes to, that's the kind I would have thought of in college when the guy tagged me with the phonetics that I told you. It would be girls macho man. Yeah, that works. Pedro, take it once. AJ400, WA3VJB. I guess Paul, uh, then uh, transmission back to me. Uh, this is uh, AJ400. I lost Paul completely. You know, I was copying him uh, 20 degrees over S9, but right now he's like an S6 on the meter, you know, right in my noise uh, level. And But I'm still copying you uh, uh, really well over here, Steve. Uh, uh, very fine that you live over here in, in Connecticut, uh, west of my location. I live on Pleasant Valley Road, Pleasant Valley Road, uh, 970 Pleasant Valley Road. Uh, but, you know, I have been here, you know, only five years. I used to live in North Carolina for many years. And we decided to move uh, up north uh, to be close to the family. And I agree with you 100%, uh, Steve. Uh, the, uh, my call sign, you know, I got a lot of problems sometimes, you know, with a double O at the end. That is what I, I decided to say, uh, AJ4 double O. Uh, because if I say uh, in a big pilot, Oscar, Oscar, always say needs the last O. So I got to repeat it several times. And I agree with you, you know, phonetically, they, they are some calls that are really strong. And we'll go through uh, the QRM uh, very easily. Uh, anyway, you know, uh, guys, I'm going to leave you uh, because I believe uh, Steve is copying uh, Paul very well. So I will let you go, and so you can continue the conversation over there because, you know, it's no good for me to be here uh, just listening to Steve. I guess uh, we are at noontime, you know, and, and the absorption probably uh, changed condition between myself and, and Paul. So I'm going to put it back to you, Steve, and, uh, and then I will go, uh, I will stay listening, uh, basically. So 73 to you, my friend, as well as to Paul. Uh, if Paul didn't call, uh, call Solid uh, copy. My uh, 73. Uh, K1GMM. And the group, this is AJ400. You take it, Steve. Okay. Uh, we'll see you later, Pedro. Nice to hear you, man. Uh, it's too bad. Um, band is weird, isn't it? Uh, you should be hearing Paul. Paul's slamming in here. Good. You're slamming it. You're like 10 over. Uh, I think Paul's 10, 15 over. No problem. Uh, I did bring the power up there, uh, modulating to about 100. Uh, so if you need more, Paul, let me know. I can go more. Usually I throw like a 100, 125 watt carrier. I just am not paying attention. Go ahead, Paul. I don't know if you can hear uh, Pedro. Uh, hopefully he can hear you signing with him. Uh, he's he's checking out. Uh, he's going to just listen because he's having a hard time hearing you, Paul. Go ahead. Yeah, no, he was fine. It was a bit of a roller coaster at the at the beginning when I first turned it over to him. I wonder where he got to. And it must have been just a, a, a lull in propagation because then he started to build back up again and finished out at about 10 to 15 over 9. So no problems copying at all, Pedro. And we'll pick it up again. There will be another occasion. Sorry you got to go, but, yeah, that's the way things are. I think, uh, you know, Steve's got a good handle on it that the band's just kind of peculiar right now. And Steve, uh, very good on the, the call letter sequence. I think Pedro's point is the same one. It's a version of yours where... 
the intelligibility at the other end is uh, is something that could have been refined in, in your original selection. I mean, you know, it, it depends on your area of interest. I don't think I've had uh, so much of a problem with the V sounding like a B, sounding like a G, sounding like a D, you know, at the outset of my suffix. And the J is often confused with a G. And uh, then, then we go through it all again with the B at the end. So, I don't know, maybe it's just a matter of a much slower pace here on AM or people take a little more time to listen. I, I don't know what, maybe the, you know, the fact you've got a carrier and uh, typically better audio than the kind of uh, pinched and narrow passband that stations were transmitting 30 years ago, uh, you know, it was a matter of intelligibility all on its own. But I, you know, I don't sweat it too much. The one thing I could have done, and I think it's still available, is to have gotten Kilowatt 3, Victor Juliet Bravo. So I would still have the recognizable suffix with a prefix that I always thought was cool. You know, Kilowatt 3. It has a sound of power to it, right? But uh, even the WA3 is not really a, a cumbersome call. I don't know. I, I just, I, having never chased dog x-ray or been a contester, I, I guess that's why I'm not sensitized to how long my call letters are. A V, J, and a B are each monosyllabic. I think if I had a bunch of W's in there, like the WW2W that, uh, that you had mentioned there, Steve, that, that would probably have started to get to me. We had a WW9W visit us at the museum station, K3RTV. He's down in Texas now, but I remember him signing the logbook, and he got on the air with us with the uh, the Collins 300G, one special event that we had running over at the museum. And WW9W, now that's whew, that, that's a lot. So I, I think your uh, your friend there who, who has since passed away, uh, even if it were the luck of the draw, I think I would probably go after something different as a result. I have a story for you next go around there, Steve, about an FCC official who was selected a, uh, a vanity call and got in trouble for it. That in a moment. K1 GMM WA3 VJB, over to you. Leave a little pause there in case somebody else wants to jump in. Um, K1 GMM, uh, now you've got me intrigued, so I'll keep this really short. Um, I have my suspicions about how to, how the human brain, and you could probably elaborate on this, how it grabs these phonetics out of a cluster, you know, a pileup or a weak signal, right? So I look at it from a syllabalistic, not a word, but a syllable standpoint. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, that's not necessarily a good thing. I think it's the way the human brain captures um, the consonants within a series of uh, syllables. You see what I'm saying? So I, I, lo I look at your call. I can give you an example. Um, it's a very small club. There's basically two of us in it. Um, it's WW1VT. And at first, when I started doing events like these and contests and stuff like that, I'm telling you what, dude, nobody ever mistakes that call. Whiskey, Whiskey One, Victor Tango. That is a powerful phonetic uh, series, series of phonetics in a call. I've never, ever once had to repeat that call sign in a contest environment or anything. Um, it's just one of those calls. It's multiple. Each, wor each letter is multiple syllables, right? But it's got very, very strong phonetics in the middle and of the letter spoken. But the brain puts it together when they hear, you know, whiskey, that type of thing. Victor, Victor is a killer. Delta, Bravo, any of those are, it's just the way the human brain, uh, way you perceive it and how you process it in real time, which is basically a light speed, really. It's within like 100 milliseconds, <laughs> right? If you think about it, I don't know, that's just my theory. Uh, back to you, and I can't wait. I can't wait to hear this one because I think this is going to be interesting. Can't imagine where you're going with it. Oh well, it's not not so much the phonetics as it is the selection of a vanity call that I'm that I'm getting ready to to tell you about. But first, I think the uh, the military had a study on phonetic intelligibility when they came up with the the military code of phonetics, and I don't know what kind of psychoacoustic studies they had done to arrive at those. 
but statistically the recognition was very high for you know Foxtrot, Romeo, Golf, and all of those. They, it's not just a matter of learning those words; it's the chance that they're going to be grasped first time. And they did they did a study on it, and I, I think from that we can probably extrapolate as to why WW1VT is so recognizable. Uh, maybe there's some leftover uh, call sign geographic recognition going on with the VT in Vermont. And the WW, the, the word W is not that uh, confusable with other letters. So that, that's an easy couple of, of, of letters to, to grasp quickly. The one is not mistaken for something else. And I think the VT, you're just associating yourself with the state. So that's why that works. But then there are others that have a cadence to them. And this, this gets toward your, your syllable-type perspective. Uh, there's a cadence to them where the mind puts together its version of a word. And some letters string together in the same recognizable way as a word would be recognized. And I think you can help that by the choice of letters that otherwise are in a random sequence. It's interesting stuff. It's very interesting stuff. And I, and I, I would like to find that military study that I remember reading about uh, either the primary study itself or a reference to it that, uh, that's out there as to how the military concluded that these phonetics for these letters are the way to go. But on the, on the vanity call system, W3HAM is a cool call, you know, ham radio and all that. And it was once held by the engineer in charge of the Baltimore District of the Federal Communications Commission. Now, this was before the vanity call system was widely available. You could select a one by three. And I think in those days it was a, a randomly generated one by three that you could pursue. You couldn't necessarily get the one you wanted. Or if you could, the, uh, the pecking order as to who could get what was not nearly as refined and well-known as it is today. So here Bob Rose, who's the engineer in charge of the FCC, got himself one of the coolest calls that people would consider having in the hobby of ham radio. And somebody started looking sideways at this and saying, hey, how did the FCC guy get those call letters? What's going on? And I don't think there was any wrongdoing ever established, but the appearance of it was not so good. So he traded it in, and he got K3OZ, which I think he is to this day. He, you know, a friend of mine. I, I know him. He's out of the agency, been out for years. And I, I've always wanted to sit him down and say, how did that ever happen anyway? But I remember when it happened, and I remember how it sorted out. So that's my, uh, my sorted story for you, Steve. K1GMM, WA3VJB. Yeah, K1GMM. Uh, that's... That's interesting, and if you, I'm not going to put any pressure on you, but if you find that, uh, I'll have a poke around too. Uh, I'm curious if you found that study online, uh, or if it was in a book somewhere. I don't even have any idea how long ago that was. So, um, yeah, if you come across that, send it to me, because it's something I've been interested in for a long time, ever since that conversation, like I said, uh, with that guy. He said, not very strong phonetically. Um, which turned out to be 100% true, uh, you know. Um, some, well, I shouldn't say 100% of the time. Uh, it, it all depends on the signal in the level of pileup. <laughs> uh, kilo, see, my mouth, for some reason, has a problem with kilo. And I say kilowatt a lot. I don't know which is better, dude. Um, I've, I've farted around with that for year, a few years now. Uh, I've just gone to kilowatt, and I'm like, dude, why are you saying kilowatt? Just say kilo. There's nothing wrong with kilo. Um, but it's the way I think, uh, because I'm quick. I'm all about speed and efficiency, dude. Uh, that's how I roll. Time is money. And I, I apply that to every single aspect of my life. Uh, whether I'm helping someone with this SDR technology or um, audio work or, or anything like that. Uh, everything revolves around the thought that time is money, speed and efficiency. Everything I do, everything that is, um, I use, all the systems in play on the station, 
every aspect of my life, I'm a retired wedding photographer, right? So um, there's certain aspects. First of all, if you're a wedding photographer, anybody who thinks about that field knows that you get one chance to get it right. Um, and if you don't get it right, you'll hear about it for the rest of your freaking life. Uh, so you got to put your when your big game face goes on. Uh, it, it's it's not a game. Uh, I, I considered it. Uh, I know this sounds extreme. I considered it a life or death because your life will go to hell if you screw it up. So <laughs> you kind of see where I'm going. But if you want to get into the how I think and how I approach everything, it's not how most people approach things. You know, so I'm kind of like the odd man out. And I've tried desperately to make an adjustment to some areas, and it's very difficult for me, Paul. Uh, you know, it's just not how I think. So this is an interesting topic um, because it opens the door to a more practical application and a more effective approach. Uh, you know, you kind of see what I'm saying? Um, if, I'm, if I'm all about speed and efficiency, well, you can be fast and you can be efficient, but it may not be successful. You see what I'm saying? To me, it's successful, but in the real world, um, there's a better way to do it. I think you understand what I'm saying, and that's what I'm learning. Uh, K1GMM. I do. K1GMM, WA3VJB. A cu couple of points. Um, I, I wonder if you've been tested for OCD. <laughs> Obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, the the intensity that you described yourself, I could feel it. It's like okay, this guy has a hard time relaxing because he's keeping track of too much stuff, you know. And the the task loading must have been tremendous when you were a wedding photographer. And I, I can very very well relate to that because I'm a I'm a broadcast reporter and I run a camera and I ask questions and I chase people around and there's only one shot at that too and I have to keep track of everything going on with the video camera I have to have a coherent question to answer to utter to ask and I have to see whether the person I'm asking the question of has spun me or answered accurately or candidly and if they haven't I gotta go at them again so it does get intense and I know exactly what you mean but there's also an off switch and when the off switch is there ah you can just coast and it gives you better perspective on how intense your day has been so that that was my first thought second thought is is whether you've ever explored the um the enunciation and articulation the the art of that um i don't hear any particular anomalies in your way of speaking but you've only got a couple of things available to you one of them is pacing uh... one of them is uh... pitch and the other one is how clearly you say your syllables uh... i i don't hear any problems with any of that but there are those who speak in a monotone they don't speak with a with a, a smile in their voice if, if you can see my teeth then i'm enunciating properly and if i don't pop my peas into the microphone then i'm using a stage p which keeps that percussive blast from hitting the mic these kind of techniques are important for clarity in a communications environment as well as in your speaking with other people at large you know in public person to person that kind of stuff is a wonderful study and when i mentor interns in my line of work I sit them down and I say, okay, listen to what you're doing here. We will have just recorded something. I'll play it back and I'll say, listen to this. And there, there'll be all these anomalies in there that nobody is conscious of. But once their attention is drawn to it, they either fix it or at least they're aware of it so that they can work around it some way or other. Steve, go ahead. Wow. Oh, uh, that's loaded. That's a loaded one. Um... Okay, so let me, okay, uh, first thing, uh, you mentioned o I am severe OCD. Quick story, uh, I'm also a musician. I've been a session musician, uh, what I call a basement butcher. Uh, not famous, not, uh, not in the press, um, never in high demand. I um, uh, wouldn't consider myself a professional, except I ran a commercial studio for 15 years, been playing this game for, since I was 17, and for just about 40 years, and I'm 58. <clears throat> and uh, 
So I've been around. Uh, let me just put it that way. I've been around. Um, so I am so severe OCD, dude. It is ridiculous. A quick story. Uh, I was working on an original project with a group, and I worked for a week to get one part in the middle of a song. It was, uh, I think you'd probably call it industrial type stuff, uh, progressive slash industrial type stuff, uh, like Rush type stuff, you know, Dream Theater, stuff like that. Not as good as that, but kind of in the same realm, right? And uh, I couldn't get this one part. I worked for a week. I don't know how many hours. So we got together. And I said, okay, uh, we were in the control room. I said, okay, listen through this. You tell me if you hear anything. So they listened through it. They said, no, cut it. It's done. It's done. I said, no, it's not. I said, listen to this one part right here. And I worked for hours, dude. I could not. I said, did you hear that? Now, I've always played to a click track. I can tell if something is out of time. I listen to commercial music, and I can hear stuff out of time. Oh, I get it I, all the time. It's not locked up between the rhythm sections. Uh, parts of the rhythm section, stuff like that, especially drums, fills, because I'm a drummer. And everything's, uh, the drummer is the clock of a band, uh, right? So they looked at me with a hairy eyeball and they said, dude, you got to freaking let it go because we <laughs> cannot hear it. And they were good musicians, better than I was. And, and they're like, well, we can't hear it. I said, listen to it again. Well, we can't hear it. I was so irritated, and that was the moment, and that was years ago, that I realized I got a problem. <laughs> I really did. I had to let it go, dude. I had to let it go. So um, now in my life, it's a constant battle to let things go. Um, and I've done a very good job of it. This entire station is held together with zip ties and duct tape. I was the most anal retentive person you could ever imagine, and this thing is an abomination, and it's amazing anything works in here, and I'm not joking. Um, if you looked at this, what's going on, if I showed you under my desk what it looks like, you'd be like, good heavens, this guy, uh, yeah. So just, I know I wanted to make that quick, but um, I laughed when you said OCD. <laughs> Uh, I am an INFJ as well. I don't know if you've ever taken the Myers-Briggs. I am extreme INFJ. Like textbook. Go ahead. Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> That's great stuff. Great stuff, Steve. Yeah, I, I, I could picture your station either being out of compliance with OSHA or the fire marshal. So that that's the imagery that came to mind. And, oh, yeah, I, I am not a trained musician by any means, but I can hear... Uh, music pretty well and I know when something's off pitch and it bothers me and when I noodle something on on a keyboard and I've, I've had a couple of Hammonds and I've had a right now I've got a Korg mechanical electric piano piano you know mechanical action but still a digitally sampled piano I will noodle forever and ever to try and figure out the chord progression or the notes I can hear them I even whistle them so I can match it on the keyboard I know they're there and I can go away and come back and hit exactly the same note that it was. Uh, you know, so I've wasted a lot of my musical talent by never having had a lesson in my life. But be that as it may, you reach a point where your enjoyment of the music is occluded by the persistence of trying to troubleshoot it. And I'll tell people that I can get most of the notes of that song. And I mean it. I'm not 100% dead on mimicking the notes that I've heard someone play but I can get 90% of them. And I'm happy with that. I, I think that's a good standard to try to meet. But, uh, no, beyond that, I'm not going to obsess about it. Go ahead. All I can say is good for you. Because life is too short, Paul. It's too short, right? And they always say, don't sweat the small stuff. Really, in the grand scheme of things, that's the small stuff. I mean, honestly, let's be honest here. Right, so... <laughs> It's too funny. Um, I don't know what the... I know... I'm going to go sideways here a little bit. What is the deal with ham radio operators being musicians and photographers? It's got to have something to do with that side of the brain. I always thought coming into it, the ham radio was the other side of the brain. But you're another one. 
how many people have you run into? You've been in it for a long time. I have not. I'm still on training wheels. I admit it. Um, you know, uh, how many people have you? I can't count, dude, the number of people I've run into. I've talked to a lot of people in the past seven years. My God, uh, the first uh, four years I was on the radio, I was on the radio about six hours a day, um, just all over the place. And uh, can't tell you how many people I've talked to that are musicians and, and, or, and or photographers. They're into photography. Um, never made any sense to me. Uh, is there a creative aspect to ham radio? I don't know. I've been wondering uh, what connects that side of the brain to this hobby. Go ahead. I don't know. I And I don't know whether you've gotten a subset of the hobby where the chances are higher you're going to find people like that. I, I have long been a proponent of AM because of its storytelling nature, Steve. Uh, there's a lot more here than on other modes. And I think it's more disclosing of oneself to be on AM because you are thinking about what the other person has said. You collect your thoughts when the person has made what we call an old buzzard transmission and you prepare to make one yourself. Um, there's a lot more depth and variety to a conversation that at least among AMers improves the chances you're going to find some, some glimmer of creativity that you're not going to find with an exchange of a signal report and good luck in the contest. I, you know, I say that somewhat critically, but I also know that this is why I've been in this part of the hobby for as long as I have. And I'm also a photographer and could share stories about my Roloflex and my Pendax 6x7 and my, uh, what, what's the, uh, it's not a Leica, it's, uh, oh, I can picture the thing, Iconta, the Zeiss Iconta, all medium format roll film cameras. I love them very much and they're not nearly as convenient as my Nikon FM3A. <laughs> but uh, needless to say, there's another area we can broach sometime. I just got the lunch call, Steve. Um, need to go in the house for a little while. Man, it's been good QSO. I, I heard you on here with uh, Ernie uh, either yesterday or the day before. And also, I think you were in here when they put their women on. Girls Macho Male. Um, Timmy put Marcy on, and uh, w, uh, Gordon, W2GOR, put Christine on, and a third guy put his, his wife or spouse or partner on, and I was hearing all these wonderful female voices on AM, and you know how much better they sound on AM than they do on other modes. It was just wonderful. So I, I don't know if you were in that QSO or not, but I, I've been listening the past couple of days as I've uh, taken some steps to refine my antenna array and then test it out. So um, that's, that's kind of a little sidebar that we can bring up the next time around. I hope you're going to hang out in this part of the hobby, Steve. It sounds like you're, uh, as you identified it, fairly new to this part of the hobby. But, man, there's a lot of good stuff here. Go ahead. Oh, there is. There, I'm absolutely stunned, and I can't thank you enough for uh, being so kind, um, you know, and hanging out in here while you listen to my dribbling. <laughs> but I'm... I'll just tell you, uh, I'm not criticizing anything. Uh, I have, I'm involved in many different aspects of the hobby, many. Uh, I could give you the list at some point. Um, just in the past seven years, what I've played with in the hobby, I've always been interested in this, but what I found is that, first of all, if you're a rag chewer, this is great, but even more than that, uh, there's a cerebral side to this. Now, there's many, I, I've been listening uh, the whole time. I've been listening for the past few years on AM. And I listen to some of the stuff, the understanding and the knowledge that you guys have of how to make this work, uh, what it really is from a purist standpoint, it, 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 it escapes me. And I admit that. But I listen and I try to learn. And some of it goes right over my head, I'll be honest. But I'm a very cerebral type person. I need to be challenged. If I'm in a... I can't do stupid, dude. I may be dumb. I may be stupid. But I just can't do stupid in a QSO. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Now, it doesn't mean we have to be technical all the time. But just take a look back at what we discussed. Uh, I'm a thinking person. I'm always thinking. Uh, and I'll end it with this. Let you go get your lunch. I told people this every single day. 
every day for the past seven years, I wake up thinking, what am I going to do today in the hobby? What am I, how do I, geez, uh, sometimes I'll pick up where I left off. Uh, when I go to sleep, I go to sleep at night thinking about it. I wake up thinking about it. I try to arrange my day. Okay, when can I get to this? When can I start working on this? What, what can I improve? Uh, you know, it's just me. It's just the way I am. Uh, non-stop research. I'm a big antenna guy. I love antennas. It's the reason I got in the hobby every flipping morning, dude. Um, for about the first four years, every morning for about two hours, I'd come down here. I wouldn't talk. I'd light up the computer and I'd just start researching and learning and figure. I tried so many antennas, dude, for the first three years, I told you. Oh, my gosh. Uh, starting to understand patterning, how they behave, um, what would work at this QTH, because it's a very unusual place that I live. It's a very deep hole. It's a canyon. What can I put up that will get me out? with in being you know what can i do that would increase uh my signal strength to certain areas uh what do i need to give up on it's never gonna work i've had to come to grips with stuff like that angle of the dangle i call it you know so yeah it's it's uh it's maddening at times but uh this mode just seems to suit um you know the type of person that i am how i think and and what interests me so there you go anyways go get your lunch we'll catch up with you later i'm sure um great to catch you man uh wow nice sounding station too uh wa3 vjb with the killer phonetics kilo one green mountain maniac how's that we'll see you in a bit <laughs> All right, Steve. Yeah, I mean, you, you, they don't come handy, do they? You, you got to think about that. There was a microsecond of delay there. Green Mountain Mania. It had just a little drag to it. You don't want that friction in there. Uh-uh. Got to grease those phonetics out. <laughs> hey, I'm going to enjoy spending time with you. We're, we're going to have fun. I will mention this. Uh, the late W3DUQ, Bill Nagel was a had a doctorate in philosophy and he was very much into otherworldly stuff uh, ufos paranormal uh spiritual other plane type stuff and he attributed his i'm going to call it clairvoyance i'm not sure that's the word he would have used he attributed his awareness of these other dimensions by the fact he was nearly killed by lightning and it sensitized him right after his survival and recovery to these other things and we used to spend hours on here just going through that he was um quite a philosopher and uh, a very good listener and he could really bring out things in the people he talked with and, and i got a hunch you're going to fit in really well here and hopefully you'll you'll get the uh, the idea of the welcome mat and the red carpet to uh spend a lot of time with us here on the radio steve uh, i'll see you later k1 gmm Girls Macho Male, WA3 Virgin's Jealous Boyfriend, clear with the radio. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's classic. Um, yep, that is a Pandora's box, dude. Uh, that would be really interesting. We'll see you later. Take care. K1 GMM. I'm clear as well. Uh, <coughs> I don't think we've worked before. Uh, I have talked to the other station. He's in my AM list of stations I've talked to on AM. This is November Foxtrot 1 Alpha. November Foxtrot 1 Alpha. Uh, hey, good to hear you. Great signal. And um, uh, name is Steve. I'm up here in southwest Vermont. I sit between Manchester and Rutland, Route 7 corridor, west side of the state. Uh, good afternoon. How are you? Okay. We're very good, Steve. My name is Art.